Well, thank you very much for joining us. It is the NTV Press Box. A quick reminder, we are proudly powered by DSTV and Guinness. And we are saying with DSTV, we are giving away football jerseys from the EPL. Which team do you support? Uh, do you want to get yourself an, an original football jersey? It's as simple as saying, uh, you tell us tonight who is the fourth highest top scorer ever in Premier League history. And that hashtag is DSTV Press Box Jersey. Plus, later on in the show, as I promised, we shall be talking about our first winner of premium subscription from DSTV as well. Welcome to the show once again. Uh, King Saha is already in the building. We shall be joining him very, very shortly. But for now, the gist of the show, the of our president, Engineer Moses Magogoy, is with us on the show. Mr. President, thank you very much for taking off some time and joining us on the show. Such a pleasure to have you tonight. Good evening. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening to our viewers. How have you been? I mean, I, I had an opportunity to interview some time back on radio and that's the last time we, we have been in touch. How has the development of football been? And I probably should start off by asking you, uh, and you've been asked this so many times, since you came to office, how do you rate the development of football since then? Why did you find us? Where are we now? Well, I think it's been a long journey, five years down the road. Mm. Um, a number of things that have taken place. But we came in with a plan, and uh, I'm a person who believes in a plan. And the plan we had was to reorganize the institution itself as a corporate institution. Mm. I think today we can acclaim that. Mm. Uh, we also talked about uh, improving on the funding sources for, uh, for the organization, yeah. which has <coughs> happened. Uh, we also talked about improving our relationships because I had a four-leg uh, manifesto. And uh, the fifth was the football itself. And mm. I think there have been some strides made in football. Can we list them here? Maybe too long a list. <laughs> too long, I, I, yeah. I mean, one of the highlights is definitely go going to the Africa Cup of Nations, which, which had not happened for a very long time. Uh, but uh, as a football fan out there, we've always wanted to know how big these tasks come. You know, getting a coach out, bring a coach in, player continuity. You, you talk about the finances, but let's talk about the practical football side itself. I mean, we read so much politics in papers. But how hard has it been to get us the Africa Cup of Nations, uh, to get us almost qualifying this time around, and to get the Ugandan name out there? W what kind of hard work has it been for you guys? I think it is all about planning. The first thing we believed in was planning. Uh, we had the first go for 2015, which was not successful. Mm. We picked a number of lessons from that, and we realized that uh, a few things. I think I came out with the eight pairs in a symposium we did in 2014 and said for us to be able to qualify, we need to address eight things. We addressed bits of them. And uh, that's why we were successful to qualify for 2017. But like I've always insisted and mentioned, that uh, qualification to the Africa Cup of Nations probably is a key performance indicator, but not our goal. Our goal is to revamp Ugandan football and create uh, an industry or professional football that can employ young people, mm. can give hope to the community, uh, and can allow Ugandans to use football as an entertainment, let alone the sponsors using that as vehicle mm. for promoting their brand. So, for us, qualification to the Africa Cup of Nations took the monkey off our back, and uh, the biggest task is to, to revamp the industry and compete with the continent. The engineer, these two, they really want to come in. They really want to ask you <laughs> questions. Uh, but the benefit of being a host is I ask my questions first, then they come in. But one more question before I bring in Mark and Andrew. Uh, are we broke as Ugandan football? And the reason I ask this is every time we are going to have cranes engagements, we see stories. We need money from government. Uh, yet we know we have sponsors. And these are things not explained to all the football fans out there. Some say, but, but engineer, Mago, we get so much money from Nambole uh, for matches. We get so, money from, so much money from sponsors. Why are you still asking money uh, from government? So the question I really want to ask, the finances have improved uh, at FUFA, but are we, can we sustain ourselves or how much do we still need government in government mm. football? No, the cost of football is high. Football is such an expensive venture. Mm. Uh, normally we look at uh, a few things and ignore them, but every small bit you say about football comes at a cost. Uh, one time I was talking to a few people and said, one of the costs is marking that field. Very many people never think about that as a cost. Mm -hmm. The costs are multitude. I told some people that uh, that ball you see us playing in Nambola alone pays a tax of 100,000 Uganda shilling per ball. Now, those are some of the things we never think about. But overall, uh, football requires about 15 years of development mm. before you get that player to compete and qualify. We never talk about development. We normally talk about the air ticket. But where did that uh, player today, that Denson Young we are talking about, or the replacement for Dens come from, must have gone through a process which cost us money. Uh, we are talking about now the national teams under 17, under 20, under 23. We are still preparing for maybe that final match that will take us to the World Cup, to Africa Cup of Nations, five years from now. Mm. And the investment must be done. Uh, so what's happening is that uh, I must give credit to government here. They have come in, 
it is no longer the other way it used to be that you have to find the president in his modes uh, and read what to say and right now in the national budget there is a fund which goes straight to finance the senior team the uganda cranes that's why we are able to pay the coach on time mm. and that is provided by government 50 national team players locally best are being paid a million shilling per month this is happening okay. uh, and this is cutters of government mm. uh, also all the coaches we have 18 coaches that is the head coach plus the 18 assistants why am i saying 18 we have six national teams people forget about that mm. the under 23 the under 20 the under 17 the women and then uh, the, the sand cranes all these assistant coaches are paid a monthly salary again cutters of government and also the national team for women football the crested cranes mm. they also paid uh, i think 350,000 a month so all this is being paid for by government having taken that burden away including the air tickets and the uh, and the allowances for the players having taken that away it has given us opportunity to use the resources now we are talking about at the federation to enter all competitions mm -hmm. as you see we are competing at almost every possible competition that <coughs> is existing uh, so it is a cost to run football yes we are making revenues but if you compare with the best in africa by the way, our vision is to become number one in Africa, mm. on and off the pitch. But for us to compete with the best on the continent, look at how much they're investing. We're still investing peanuts compared to them. But the good thing, we are a, a country that is endowed with a lot of talent, and uh, uh, we, are, we are working day and night, and we believe that uh, this investment we are making come five years. Let me be more specific. 2016, we must be playing at the World Cup. Oh. 2026. <laughs> 20, 20, 2026. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. But um, this money you're talking about when you say government, uh, it's quite impressive actually. I, I hadn't quite visualized it like that when you talk about 18 coaches and all the players and tickets and things and salaries. Has it been institutionalized? Is it um, embedded in some sort of law that has been passed that uh, cannot be repealed? Um, who, n never mind who the sports minister is or which MP um, is making noise in the house. Wh what arrangement is this? How, how, how permanent is it? How futuristic is it? Well, the, the way the national budget is done, we, we follow under the Ministry of Education and Sports, and as more specifically the National Council of Sports, and there has been a vote created in the national budget a line, and uh, it can only be removed by, by a motion in Parliament. Mm -hmm. So okay. we had to do a lot of advocacy to get to this point, and I think for me this is the biggest achievement we have, that uh, uh, having the national team expenses paid for by government, it allows a lot of resources for development and getting to the grassroots. So it's not something we have to worry about. There must be some member of parliament to stand up and cause a motion mm. that this should be removed. I don't mm. see that happening soon. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yeah. still, still on that, uh, Engineer Moses, uh, you talked about a million shillings uh, per locally best player per month yes. from government. Yes. When did that start and what's the criterion of deciding which local best player uh, get that money? How much must they have done to earn that money? Actually, what happens is that uh, in the last financial year, remember we ran a July-June financial year's government. Yes. Uh, mm. The last financial year, that is uh, the, the, the second half, mm. starting January 2017. Mm. No, January 2018. Mm. Mm. That is the, the sixth month, the first half of this year. There was a supplementary budget that was done to finance all that I've just communicated. But that was a supplementary budget, and a, a supplementary budget may be removed. So what has happened that in the new financial year now, in the new budget that was just passed, it has been institutionalized like Mark was asking. Mm. How do we come out with the criteria of the 50 players? It is the head coaches that determine. We have put a, po uh, uh, a portion for the open, then the under 20, and then the under 23, because we are looking at them as the players for tomorrow. The whole objective is to make sure that players don't move away so soon mm. because of the pay, by the time they are moving away, maybe it should be uh, something. If you look at one million, it, some of the best paying clubs in this country are paying maybe just less than, than that. Mm. So we believe that it could hold the players such that by the time they are moving out of Uganda, they are going to better markets. Not maybe East Africa, but maybe Southern Africa mm. or North Africa or even out of the continent. So mm. the coaches come up with a list and the administrators... All we need are bank accounts for these players because this money is paid directly into, into the, the bank, bank accounts of these yeah, players. Okay. Is it a growing list? Is it a growing list? It is a changing list. Changing list. Uh, changes uh, depending uh, uh, on... Us to, okay. I mean, uh, Mangusha is going to go on with this money. So <laughs> yeah. to <laughs> no, what, I need, what I need to yeah. understand from him before you go mm. to the football is um, how much say then does it give government over uh, Ugandan football? You know 
the line that uh, used to be told about uh, government interference and FIFA bans yes. uh, back in the past. Yeah. And um, something which has actually literally happened in certain other countries. And, but one including which, Uganda. Uh, but yeah, if, including Uganda, yeah. But, and one which FIFA used to hold over the rest of us mm. um, uh, when, when we asked government to come in at a time when we thought you guys were not doing a good job of it and uh, somehow you are not accountable. How much now does it, uh, how much say does government get after spending these, uh, these uh, lo uh, loads of millions on you guys? First of all, every Ugandan, we believe, and if you look at our five-year plan, we believe that one of the areas we must work on, or we are working on, is uh, to improve on the stakeholders' confidence. Mm -hmm. And government is one of our key stakeholders. Mm -hmm. They should have confidence in us. The way we do business, the way we conduct ourselves mm -hmm. in terms of governance uh, has been a challenge to us as an institution. But some area we have improved greatly. We mm -hmm. do our accountabilities as required, and this is taxpayers' money. So it has nothing to do with interference. Mm -hmm. This is money. If you paid the money, you must account for it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't account for it, then the laws are applied. Mm -hmm. And FIFA has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. Actually, the point of uh, what they would call uh, interference is when they get into the statutes, into the regulations of running the game of football. Okay. Uh, but as far as following the laws of the country, it's a requirement. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Madam uh, Janet cannot uh, suck you, can still not suck you? No, can't. That's okay. I wanted to know how far, but, how but much power it is. No, yeah? But we, do, we wouldn't give her that chance. Okay. And what we we'll do is by performing very well. Before you leave, Dre, before you leave, uh, before you leave, now, uh, the, the one million shillings. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the one million shillings. Does he have a does it, does it? Does it? Is it the same for an under 23, an under 20, and a senior? Team player. No, it's one million shilling for every player who goes onto that list. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's what it is. But uh, the most and it doesn't include crested cranes, does it? No, the crested cranes is three hundred and fifty, mm. and this was improvised by the federation. What was provided by government is oh. the fifty mm. male players. But we looked at it and said. Uh, these ladies are also national team players and actually our debate with the government at the moment we are saying uh, the girls and the boys are the same probably mm. the, the, the amount should be the same mm. but right now there is a financial year running it can't be included probably in the future mm. the, it will be considered I, I, I want us to talk football now because uh, uh, I'm, I'm scared of a generational <laughs> gap now <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I've read so much international football and these national teams come up and dominate football for a while and then they, they, they disappear for a while. We were recently at the Africa Cup of Nations. Euphoria for any Ugandan out there. Now, we have Geoffrey Massa retiring from... I'm trying not to ask you the more technical questions for more strategic questions. Uh, Massa leaves the national side. Onyango is not the youngest of players in there. We have a good five, six players who easily will be leaving any time now. From a federation perspective, the technical perspective, uh, how big is the mass of players we have at the moment? How much are you guys doing to make sure we have continuity in Ugandan football? Uh, because... I'm scared of a generational gap, uh, Mr. President, here. And this happens everywhere in world football. Yeah. Where are we with our technical team? And how happy are you with what is happening in terms of sporting these players? Because I'm happy to talk about the under-23 and, and, and... No, you need to look at our plan. Um, we're taking it to the General Assembly, actually, uh, that will be happening this October mm. for approval such that the financial year next year, starting January, activities are undertaken in accordance with an approved plan. But when you look at it, we started the FUFA Juniors League in 2015. Yeah. And uh, it is one of the revelations that we have. Uh, mm. It was challenged in the beginning, but we had the vision and the leadership to, to enforce it. And right now we have the under-17 team that has just qualified for the first time for the Africa Cup of Nations. Yes. And for me, this is the biggest, the biggest news that we should be talking about as Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, people could be disappointed with, uh, with the draw we are mm. making with Tanzania. Mm. But for me, the good news is that... Uh, these boys under 17, and remember they are actually under 17. They have go <laughs> undergone. <laughs> that's an interesting yes. point. The MRIs program. and all. We, yeah. have, we have undergone the technology that's being yes. used, MRIs, mm. uh, for us to be sure. But we started with the MRI for every player who is playing the FUFA Juniors League. It doesn't cost little money to undertake one player, mm. about a million shilling almost. But we have done that for all the players playing the FUFA Juniors League at our cost as a federation such that we are sure of mm. a pool. Mm. Now, mm. when you hear the under-17 national team among the eight, the first time it is qualifying, with the possibility of going to the World Cup under-17, those following football, technically, it is no longer possible for a player to play very well for the Koreans at AFCON and join the top clubs in Europe. Mm. It's no longer impossible. It is at this age. If you look at the statistics of accreditations of the scouts who come for the under-age competitions in Africa, compared to AFCON, because most of the players at AFCON, Abim Young and uh, Mahez, all these guys coming are already signed up. Yes. So we believe that giving our players an opportunity 
to be playing at the finals of under 17 is one of the biggest. Mm. Eight countries have qualified and the top four go to the World Cup in a period later in the year. And all our players who are in Tanzania actually qualify by the regulations. So we believe that that is a very, very good uh, group. But remember, we have a very, very good under 20 team. Mm -hmm. May have not qualified uh, the generation of the Polotos and Shabans and mm. Okeros, who were an under 17 some few years ago, mm. if you remember. Mm. So we believe that this under 20, and there is also a generation of the under 23 players who are hanging around the cranes with an opportunity to play. So indeed, some players are not going to be replaced. Yeah. This happens all over the world. But what I'm sure is we have a pool of about 100 players that we are looking at. And I believe getting 11 Ugandans are from among us, these ones. Yeah. We have also gone on international scale to try and look for Ugandans elsewhere. We're in contact with a number of them. We haven't been successful to get Ugandans born elsewhere or raised elsewhere like other countries have done. Mm. But we believe that we shall continue with the search. Well, because we're not attractive? We don't have money? What's the problem? <laughs> I mean, no. Sisto, the guy who plays for, is it Denmark? No. Mm. Has roots here. I saw him doing brilliantly. No, but we haven't been doing this very strategically. Mm -hmm. I think at the moment we are doing it more strategically. The coach went out there and visited the homes of these players. In the past, I don't think we were doing it rightly. But right now, we have a bit of resources to send the coach and, and go to the clubs and go to the parents and go to these players. But we are more interested in the ones in the age brackets of 17 and 20, 17, yeah. but such that they can gel with the rest of them. Uh, yeah, but what are you doing differently to ensure that uh, the transition is smoother? Yep. that the continuity is there because in the past we've had underage teams of, of uh, entire teams not showing up at the next level at senior level or under 19s not playing under 23 football in four years and um, guys disappearing along the way no what, what are you doing differently because no, what it's, we are doing it's, it's, is, uh, it's, a, it's a big ask. we are entering all the competitions that are available in the mm. past we used to avoid some competition for financial reasons mm. when you are looking after the cranes 100 percent there are certain uh, competitions we would not enter we just keep quiet about them uh, if under 17 we are qualifying right now, there have been competitions before and we have not been engaging in some of them. Mm -hmm. Actually, the strategy was we do under 17, then don't do the under 20, and then do the under 23. So in the process, we would have gaps. Two, the coaches for the junior teams are now part of the national team cranes coaching setup. Mm -hmm. Right from under 17, it's a department which we have created and these people... We are mm -hmm. saying we are paying you a salary. Can you come to office and work? So basically, it's no longer a one-off whereby some of these people, when they want, they can come. And maybe when they are not, they, they could be away. So mm -hmm. there's a bit of um, uh, a strategy in terms of the, the coaches, in terms of the competitions we're entering. Mm -hmm. You can see the girls. We could have not gone to South Africa if we chose. Mm -hmm. But then we said it's an expense, but we need the continuity for these girls, and that's how we are proceeding. Well, engineer. Uh, on to because uh, we, we need to talk about the UPL. We need to talk yes. about. Uh, uh, I want to ask something about Infantino, because you 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 you, you supported Infantino. Mm. I'm not sure if you're happy with, with the new reign at FIFA, mm. uh, but I want to start off with Sebastian Di Sabre. Mm. He comes in clearly under lots of pressure with what Mitchell had done uh, for Ugandan football. A few matches have gone. He started off with Chan. You talked about the nil nil draw with Tanzania. Mm. How happy are you with, with his performance? Uh, is is it still honeymoon for him? Because I tell you, some critics on Twitter are not happy with the statistics at the moment. No, I think we are being impatient at the moment. We, there is no reason for us to press any panic button mm. at the moment. Okay. When you're going to take decisions of this level, you really need a lot of statistics around yourself. We are doing analysis over the first competitive match the coach has been in charge of. Yes. We are doing an analysis about a coach playing in a derby match. We all know what it means playing in a derby match. Mm. But we, we are used talking to win about this game. Under Mitchell, we have comfortably beaten Tanzania. Oh, I, I think that was where, Kafa. Where did we start with Mitchell? Mm. We started with saying he should be sacked, and it was the, actually the federation that insisted that let us give uh, Mitchell some time. The federation He actually me. failed mm. in a full campaign. People are forgetting that we didn't qualify for 2015. Yes. After a full campaign, uh. I'm sure there are lessons he picked up along the way that were applied for 2017. Then we, we, but this man has been here. This is the first competitive match. I think the statistics and data we have is not enough yet mm. for us to analyze and say he has done well. We know what happens with the friendlies. We know what happens. Some good players are, are required to sit such that others are given an opportunity. And for us as the, as the federation, we decided to give him as many matches as possible. It hasn't been in the past. Uh, such that he can acquaint himself with the players. Mm -hmm. But like I'm we are comparing with, with Mitchell. Mitchell was in Uganda before he came back. Mm. He knew the terrain of this part of, of the world. Mm. Then two, he needed a full campaign. 2015, that was not successful. Mm. We, are being, uh, we are just looking at the one which was successful mm. after 39 years. 
But we remember the under 23s when we were playing Mozambique here when the Farouk Mias we are missing. We haven't given this opportunity. For me, I can't give uh, my opinion right now. I think we need a lot of statistics uh, before we can say uh, whether the coach has really performed. Yes. One competitive match in a derby match, I think it is too early to press it. And in, in any case, uh, there is no reason to press a panic button. We mm. still believe we are in control and our objectives qualify to AFCON Cameroon 2019 and I'm very sure we'll get there. Okay. Now, um, let's come down to the, because you talked about the UPL. Yes, that's yeah, the UPL. When, uh, coming down to that, the, the, ris the one thing I'd like for you to clear up um, is um, the sponsorship issues. You've had, um, um, you've, you've had your issues with, um, with, with sponsorships. Um, Azam has, uh, has left and then uh, you, you've brought on um, Star Times on board in between those uh, sports broadcasting and all. And then you've got, on, on the other side, you've got clubs. And many of them, uh, many of the clubs are in, um, I will call it a, a wake-up state. They are shaking themselves awake and um, getting themselves corporate and also modernizing and um, revamping themselves uh, because the, the growth, uh, the, 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 the revitalization of Ugandan football mm. has um, swept up just about everybody. Clear up the air on the sponsorship issues that, um, that are, are now at the moment um, on the table uh, with some of the clubs and, uh, and, and the Federation and the Uganda Premier League uh, because of, um, say, I don't know, clashes um, and... and, and uh, uh, whatever it is, yeah, but just clear up the air so that people understand exactly how you're going to be dealing with any issues that the clubs might have. Uh, no, we, we need to just understand the setup that we have at, uh, uh, at FUFA as far as the league is concerned. Mm. Uh, the league uh, where the teams participate is a competition that is created by the federation and uh, the federation has delegated a company, uh, FUFA Super League mm. Limited, to run the, the league. Mm -hmm. And the, this company is a creation of 16 clubs uh, that have ordinary shares with the federation having a special share, which is uh, a veto share, mm -hmm. and the clubs have the vote share. Mm -hmm. um, that's purely the English Premier League setup mm -hmm. that we, 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 we copied and pasted. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is happening is that uh, uh, we need television money. Football to get everywhere, we need television money. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, when you look at it, there are not very many players in this industry at the moment that are going to provide this amount of money. Uh, and then when you look at it, the history of television and the Ugandan football, especially the league, uh, in terms of amounts, I think we have the biggest amount of money ever in cash mm. that is coming in per year. Um, if you look at it, it is the first time that we are having even the second uh, tire league also getting on TV and getting some money as well. Um, I think that is something that we should be looking at very positively. Mm -hmm. If you look at the kind of audience that we are targeting to throw the league to, I think this is the biggest uh, subscriber base of 1.3 million uh, uh, viewers. We believe that this is also giving us. But then the question has always been that uh, um, decisions were done, clubs were not consulted. Uh, we, we need to understand how this works. Uh, the clubs vote. Actually, they vote the board. And when they vote the board, the board is a board of directors. And we know how company law works. The way company law works is that the moment you appoint the directors, the shareholders hand over their responsibilities to the directors. And as we, this deal was being negotiated, the directors or the board was fully involved, mm. the pros and the cons of the contract. And there is no way you are going to discuss such a contract in a stadium. You have, dis you have to negotiate such contracts behind... Uh, uh, behind doors and when you're ready and sure that the interests of the the other members are taken care of and we believe the interests we are taken care of then we must also remember that this is not a, we are not in the best of positions to say in the deal we must determine all the uh, the deal breakers there are situations where we reached and, and we lost some we won some because this deal started at three hundred thousand mm. dollars because the, the, the person who was trying to buy realized that probably there isn't competition now, for us raising it from $300,000 to $680,000, for me, it should be something we are looking at. Mm -hmm. On the other side, how much are we giving as football? Mm -hmm. How ready are we as clubs to give a product that is going to make business? What has happened in the past? All the previous people have left. Uh, GTV left before, uh, DSTV left before, or Supersport left before, and then uh, Azam has not renewed. Are we really doing proper business for, for the people who are putting in money? Mm -hmm. We must look at that.
that we must be doing business. Otherwise, if we are just picking money and not doing business, probably it's a reason. Mm. So we, we need to go slow. We need to be very careful. We need to do business for the providers mm. such that we can continue. Ten years yeah. ago, how much was it? $530,000. Mm. How much is it? 680. People are talking about the 10 years. But even with the absence of the current deal, how much have we transformed? We, the football ourselves, mm. the value of our rights to be useful or to be valued by the people buying them. In engineer, mm. I want to cut you short because uh, that man behind the camera is my producer and he's making a lot of noise. He says <laughs> uh, we need to switch over to, to Joel Kamali. Um, but yes. I'm, I'm going to allow the gentleman here. This. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I'm really enjoying this. I don't know why the producer has to <laughs> it is. in this way. Yeah. But I want to ask the gentleman to have one final question, which should be very short and very brief. Yes. Uh, then I'll ask him about Infatino at the end because we really are running out of time. I'll start with Mangusha. Yes, uh, Engineer uh, Moses. Just wait, Mangusha, one second. Uh, you can send us those questions to uh, Engineer Moses Magogo. The hashtag is NTV Press Box. Uh, if you have any question about Ugandan football that you want mm. him to answer, whether it will be answered on the show or he will follow it up. Uh, is very open to debate. Mm. Of course, the most contentious issue has been the, you know, uh, competing brands. Uh, and and uh, we, we've had, uh, of course, uh, Express. I'm, I'm told they're still behind the, 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 the scenes trying to negotiate whether they can bring on board one of those. Now, every time certain things like these, these deals come up, we hear clubs, you know, mumbling, you guys went ahead, did this, behind our backs, name it. And you've explained exactly how the board works. How could it be that the board is detached from the people they are representing? How come when these deals come up, the clubs, most of them, at least I speak to yeah. quite a number and I share some of the fora yeah. with you, they say, no, we were not informed. Up to now, how, they how say they haven't read those contracts. Is the example. board from mm. the people they are representing at FUFA? Mm. No, I, I think that's why I said we must be uh, slow and try to, to understand how things work. Mm. The moment uh, your shareholders in a company and you appoint a board of directors, mm. there's a lot of your powers that you surrender to that board. The powers that you reserve is to keep them in office or not to keep them in office. But as long as you have appointed that board, they take care of your interests mm. in the best of terms. There's no way you're going to consult mm. that deal. And it has not even happened. Even the mm. previous deals, it never happened mm. that uh, the board has to go and uh, uh, share that contract with every club Everyone to be club. able to read. I, I think we need to, to up our game on that. Mm -hmm. The reality is, uh, those are very good sentiments, uh, but the reality is that you cannot negotiate such a deal and it's going to be a contract. Remember, we are talking about a sponsor who is in a competition in business with very many other people, mm -hmm. and these are trade secrets, there are figures involved there. I think it would be unfair to, to, to the sponsor to uh, be doing that. The, the very last one, Engineer Moses, mm -hmm. uh, from me, the very last one. The UPL the fixtures. <laughs> UPL fixtures. I know you don't draft the fixtures, <laughs> uh, but the league starts next week on Friday. Mm. No fixtures. Mm. I mean, th that's hilarious. Mm. Um, and uh, of course, it has to do, according to the explanation from UPL, mm. the licensing uh, board. There are some clubs that are yet to fulfill some of the requirements. Mm. Why wait towards the beginning of the season and we begin these inspections? Why not at the end of the season, we know the clubs that are promoted, we start at least by nudging them you know into action and now here we are less than two weeks there are no fixtures and we are talking of professional league uh, it is the same concern we have but you must remember that on one side we have the federation on the other side you also have the clubs mm. that uh, this process starts early but the process of fulfilling is also undertaken by by the clubs um, it is indeed true the exercise started some time back we've been pushing them but uh, today i've just seen the report only nine out of the 16 clubs I must mention mm, have wow. fulfilled the conditions. Yes, we are talking about two weeks, but seven of the clubs are still not ready, have not fulfilled the conditions that we need. And we are being strict and are saying if the, if the clubs don't fulfill the conditions, mm. probably we will go with those ones that have fulfilled. Mm. So yes, uh, as FUFA, we should be doing much better than that. As the organizers of the league, we should be doing much better than that. But also as the clubs, they must be doing much better than that. Because we are talking about certain very minimum basics that must be in place. For example, we say the pitch must not have any bare soil anywhere yes. that is visible. And I think that's not a very big calling. And some clubs are falling off simply because of this. Mm. There is no stadium in Barara that is going to do football mm. according to the standards of the league that we want. You know? So it is a challenge to us. We want football to be there. But then we must take the hard decision that these clubs cannot play football 
where they are located. Mm. Is it their challenge? Probably it's too big to ask. In very many countries, studies are done by authorities. They are not done by clubs. Yes. But again, these are standards that we all want to, to adhere to. So yes, probably we'll do much better. Mm. But I can't say we lost a bit of time in trying to... To, to get the sponsor as well. Uh, Mr. President, let's wrap up. Guys, please, no more yeah, yeah, is out. They, they don't have a green I, 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 I know this is a question. <laughs> yeah, I know this discussion. Uh, well, okay. What's your question? Just leave me your question. <laughs> I, add, uh, I can just add it to mine. Because no, I want you to... I, no, I we'll get us. another opportunity. Yeah. I think we need another opportunity because I still had a lot for him. We shall, we yeah. shall invite him to the show. But mm. please, your, your, your concluding remarks. Uh, first of all, about where we are going as Ugandan football. Because I started off with the AFCON and what the big battle with coaches and everything moving forward. But also tell me uh, if you still believe you made the right decision with Infatino because you came with so many promises. Some people felt uh, Blatter had you know, constructed something nice for world football. You came out, voted for Infatino. Mm. How good has he been to you and Ugandan football and us moving forward? It has been so good, mm. in my view. Because the, the money that was promised has been coming through. It is very, very controlled money in terms of the, the monitoring and the, the accountabilities. And very many, I'm aware that very many African countries are not picking this money because of the challenges of putting in place systems, mm. uh, financial monitoring systems and accountabilities. That's the minimum requirement. Some people have complained that these are European standards. Uh, it was a little bit lax with blood at that time. Uh, but, but I think that uh, there is nothing wrong with monitoring. Mm. For us, we have been very compliant and uh, the resources are coming in. That whole under-17 league we are talking about today is being financed. Uh, we've put up projects. We are starting up a stadium in Lugazi. Uh, we are starting up Kadiba. Construction is going on. The extension of Fofa House is going on. Uh, and even the operations fund that was improved from 250500 has been coming through. So you can see more staff, uh, more motivated. So for us, we are doing very well. Mm. So we, we, I don't think it was wrong. It was a very good decision. But as Africa, as a country, we must up our game to be able to fulfill the conditions. So for me, I think it's doing very well. And we must up our game to meet with these objectives. Mr. President, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us on the press box. Uh, clearly, we have so many questions. The discussion should have been longer. So we invite you now, when you're still on air, uh, to please come back on the show next time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Engineer Moses Magogo, the FUFA president, giving us his thoughts. You can as well still send us those questions. The hashtag is NTV Press Box. Do you have anything about Ugandan football that you'd want to hear from uh, the president himself? We've got to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we are on our way to King Saha. He's in the building. Joel Kamadi is going to be catching up with him. Plus, we're giving away more jerseys when it comes down to our partnership with DSTV. We're also proudly powered by Guinness. It's the Press Box.